Welcome to the very first lecture of Community Pharmacy Management. This lecture, um, we're going to be focusing on two topics, the management function and creating value, um, especially in the new value-based health system we're seeing evolve in community pharmacy. In addition, there will be a second lecture um, this week on focusing on the leadership of pharmacy. Also, there will be some additional videos to watch, um, and I will have those all posted, and you should have already saw those on Blackboard. As you know, I'm Rob Mayer, and I introduced myself in the video overviewing the syllabus. I believe, uh, Tom, you're the only one in the course, so we'll be a little bit more informal here. Um, just, you know, during the videos when I tape, I'll refer to different things from an independent pharmacy standpoint and also some skills from a chain standpoint. My current role, um, since we last met, I am the Director of Pharmacy Services for uh, Kalinga Smith Drugstore, which is an eight-store independent family-owned chain, and actually help in the management of pharmacy services for my family's pharmacy in Patton, Pennsylvania. We will be meeting live through Zoom meetings, but please feel free to reach out to me anytime you have questions, problems, either by email or cell is perfectly fine. And I look forward to working with you this semester. When we think about the management of pharmacy, a lot of times when we are students in pharmacy, we don't realize the importance of it. Mostly, most pharmacists don't. Mostly we are focused on our curriculum is to teach us the sciences, the pharmacokinetics, the pharmacology, and we go to pharmacy school, most people do, to want to take care of patients, to have, you know, they go because they have a love of the sciences, especially chemistry and biology. But if you take a look at this case, and we'll be using um, the book this semester, as I mentioned in the syllabus, Pharmacy Management, Essentials for All Practice Settings, the fourth edition. And we'll be referring to cases and discussion questions in this book. So I open up with this. We have a student, Krista Conley, second year pharmacy student, probably being having multiple tests, multiple assignments, as we all can remember when we are in pharmacy school, and stressed out. Her typical day, she gets up early so she can get to her first class. She attends lectures, labs, workshops. She has to complete assignments. She has to meet to review maybe, you know, prior exam. And she also has to attend an ACP meeting for this day. Her responsibilities in this ACP organization, she's actually the president. So she works with committee chairs and she works with professionals to help, you know, develop different um, types of uh, charity services they want to do in the organization, fundraisers they want to do. Um, the current fundraiser chair wants to quit, so she has to convince this person not to quit. She has to submit a report to the national chapter on their activities and then she has to also post it on the website. She gets frustrated because some of the people she works with she can't motivate them to do a better job. She also has at her internship job she complains about a pharmacy manager at work and not sure how can that person can be a manager if they can't help her do things that she wants to be as a pharmacist. This student also doesn't realize the importance of pharmacy management at this stage in her career. But even though she doesn't realize that, a lot of her tasks she's already doing are tasks that you would do in the management of pharmacy. So what is the management of pharmacy? What is the people's initial thought of what is management? Management a lot of times, and we'll talk about this especially when we look at the leadership lecture, management at times is really, in my opinion, managing processes. And those processes are to obtain a goal or an objective or to meet an outcome. The Webster Dictionary defines management as to control the movement of, the behavior, or to lead or direct or succeed or accomplish. The only thing I differ in this de definition is you lead people and you manage, it, manage processes. That's just my one person's opinion but that's kind of the way I look at my managerial style. 
There's also another definition by some business, business experts in the 1990s that wrote, management is a process which brings together resources, unites them in such a way that they collectively achieve goals or objectives in the most efficient manner as possible. So often we have to use resources such as our own employees, our technology, our healthcare partners, such as physicians, health systems, and we have to unite them all together in an organized fashion to meet a certain goal and objective. So management is really organizing processes to meet a goal or objective. This semester, we will be focusing on lots of different types of processes that you have to do to meet certain goals and objectives. There are strategic, you know, management planning. There is operational management. There is financial management. We will be hitting on, there's human resource management. We'll be hitting a lot of these processes throughout the semester and getting you to look at where you need to know things to build your skills in this management process. So we look at the history of management in community pharmacy. We were managers from the beginning. Prior to the 1940s, when pharmacy was mainly um, a passed down apprentice, um, where you were, you know, basically learned the skills of pharmacy by working in a pharmacy. There was no former education. And during that time, most pharmacies were compounding because there was not a lot of manufactured products. And so pharmacists who had these pharmacies were having to manage inventory, manage time and people to meet their complex tasks. In the early 1900s, there was a report called the Flexner Report. And this report was um, um, done by the government to look at the different healthcare entities and trying to formalize healthcare in a better way to improve patient care. When this Flexner Report came out, it kind of questioned whether or not pharmacists were necessary. Because of this report, pharmacy realized to be able to be recognized and to survive, it had to have some type of formal degree. And this is when we started seeing the first four-year BS degree. Both Pitt and Duquesne developed their pharmacy schools in the 20s um, based on this report. In the 1940s and 60s, this was kind of the era of expansion of healthcare. In the pharmacy world, we saw a decline in compounding, but we saw more manufacturing. Also, in the early 50s was the pass passing of the Durham-Humphrey Act, which required certain drugs needing a prescription from a physician in order for a pharmacist to fill it. Because of these different changes, we saw pharmacy more expand as a dispenser role. In the pharmacy curriculum, it focused more on the sciences of pharmacology, pharmaceutics, medicinal chemistry, and so management responsibilities kind of went by the wayside. Although we did see an expansion of chain pharmacy during this time in community and independent community pharmacy, these places did have certain people within the company doing some managerial things, just as we discussed earlier. And then we got into the 1970s and beyond. We then started seeing the clinical doctorate programs develop. And then by the year 2000, we had the 60-year PharmD farm degree. And even during that time, we saw management courses pass. But we saw healthcare change. Healthcare has changed by the way people get paid. We see the PBMs arise. And so they've had a different impact on how we have to manage in terms of our inventory, our workflow, and our time. But because of all this, we're now seeing the development of clinical services in the community pharmacy setting. And now there's more challenges in that realm for management. If you think about a pharmacist currently in the workforce of community pharmacy, you have a pharmacist loaded with lots of knowledge with disease state management, assessment skills, pharmacology, kinetics, dynamics, pseudics, and pharmacotherapy. We do want our pharmacists talking to patients, counseling them. But often the way our workflow is, the, the, you know, the changes in reimbursement, those skills are sometimes suppressed and the, we, we are getting pharmacists who are very knowledgeable in those but not very knowledgeable in management. 
one of the things we that management has to look at is workflow and workflow allows processes to occur so that we can actually fill a prescription we've developed many different types of workflows over the years on how we input a prescription process a prescription output a prescription and those require managerial skills to be able to do that. A lot of these things that I'm talking about, an overview, will go into more detail as the semester goes on and we'll even go into more detail next semester. The other thing currently right now, our model is this in community pharmacy. We have the pharmacy, but the pharmacy has to work with the wholesaler to get product. A lot of times we are managing inventory, we're managing um, Farm, uh, drug shortages, we're managing outdated stock, and we're also managing, you know, our, you know, the payer side, the pharmacy benefit manager. We've seen a, re, you know, a squeeze on reimbursements over the years, and so we have to become better efficient at buying to be able to deliver product to the patient. We have to become more efficient in workflow to be able to deliver to the patient. And currently right now, this whole pricing model, and we can, we'll go more detail about this later on. Um, next semester, we'll actually look at how to evaluate um, contracts. But we, do, we will look at this in more detail. And because of this squeeze on reimbursement, pharmacies are looking at other streams of revenue, other pharmacy services to offer, which also require management skills. So currently right now there are challenges in community pharmacy that managers must face. There's a majority of our income is tied to product. Reimbursement rates continue to decrease. Prior to Medicare D, pharmacies were doing very well, but as we gone through the cost to dispense a prescription and that cost to dispense prescription has allowed it, you know, this industry become a lot, you know, tighter people have to become more efficient. So pharmacies, especially people that own their own pharmacies, have to look at ways to preserve product reimbursement. But it's not just happening in the independent pharmacy world, it's happening in the chain pharmacy world. Just this past summer, Walmart laid off 4% of its pharmacy workforce, filling the squeeze of that. So constantly too, Pharmacy managers and pharmacy owners, you know, pharmacy leaders within the chain industry and independent pharmacy industry are often having to manage their time to speak with politicians, policymakers, meet with, you know, wholesalers to get better pricing, negotiate with PSAOs to help, you know, how can I get into network status for my pharmacy to be a preferred pharmacy for patients with certain insurances. And pharmacies then also have to not only look at filling prescriptions faster, but they are being graded on how well their patients are adherent. So we need to manage, you know, programs such as med synchronization programs, adherence packaging programs to help offset that. Traditionally, we always thought of pharmacy as more of the preparation of the drug and dispensing the drug drug and so really we only had to focus on the product how much we can buy the product how cheap we can get the product how cheap we can dispense but as we evolve into clinical pharmacy there are opportunities for us but they are more patient focused and so there are other managerial challenges there so we traditionally think about you know operational management of these traditional practices reviewing interpreting the prescription you know, how does our pharmacy software help us with assessing if something's wrong? How do we counsel a patient, document, contact doctors? Lots of different operational, you know, management is in there. But as we have these evolving practices such as MTM, adherence programs, education programs, immunization, collaboration with primary care physicians, there are opportunities and, and also challenges in management. The other thing is there's the financial side. And so, you know, we as managers have to look at, you know, what are our sales? If the sales are down, is it due to what is our marketing strategy to increase those sales? 
What is our gross margin? So therefore we have to look at our inventory control and our purchasing ability. If our net income is down, we have to look at our operating expenses. So enable to improve profitability in any type of pharmacy business, we have to either increase sales, buy cheaper, or reduce operating expenses. As I said, the other challenge is operational. So how efficient can we be to control our cost of dispensing? What are the processes we're doing for our input time, our processing time, and our output time? And as we get into more pharmacy services, as I mentioned in the prior slides, what is our clinical community workflow and what are the tools that we can do this? There are lots of things that go on in managing pharmacy care practice, such as, you know, there's risk management. We're going to talk about risk management later on in the, in the semester, but risk management can be on our, you know, how do we handle drug utilization reviews? How do we document therapeutic interventions? How do we calculate, you know, document the calculation of dosages for special populations? How do we report adverse adverse drug reactions to the FDA? How do we handle drug recalls? How do we, what's our workflow process and our documentation process for MTMs or any other pharmacy care services? And we also have to look at the financial management of these pharmacy care services. So if we think about, you know, what is management in pharmacy? We have to look at managers versus administrative appointments. What is your role as a manager? And as a manager, are you a leader or what are you? You know, what is your responsibilities? There's different multiple theories of management. And one of those is FAIL's five management functions. And FAIL's five management functions include forecasting and planning, organizing, commanding, coordinating, and controlling. And these became widely acceptable, especially during the Industrial Revolution. Both FAIL's five management functions are still used by managers today. And so if you look back to our case with Krista Conley, all right, think about she had responsibilities for working with her chapter. Think about where you work, that you may have to forecast and plan. You may have to create a schedule for your employees. You may have to look at, you know, you know, it, you know when, when spring comes, you have to forecast how much flu vaccines you have to order. You may have to organize, you know, maybe you're going to do a flu clinic, so you have to organize what staff will be there. Then sometimes you have to give commands of what are people supposed to do, coordinate with how they're going to do it, and control it. Often during that time period, we also may have to, you know, provide things such as discipline, job descriptions, and workflow tasks. Faoli additionally had 14 principles for organizational design and effective administration. Everything from specialization, specialization division of labor. So think in the pharmacy. We have order entry technicians. We have fill technicians. We have clerks. We have pharmacists. We may have MTM pharmacists. We may have humanized pharmacists. We may have people that do multiple cross divisions of labor. We also have to find out who is the chain of command. Who is responsible for which task. It may be one individual person. It may be based on shift. How do we, what do we do if people do not follow the rules? What are the consequences if they don't? You know, what is, you know, you know, how can we, you know, you know, start a new service and up it in scale? You know, and so there's numerous functions that the principles, even though these are over 100 years old, kind of play a role in what we do now. So what are the managers in today's role? There's three dimensions of management. There's activities that managers perform, there's the resources that managers need, and there's the level at which managers make decisions. And there's different managers at different levels. All managers have to think about planning, organizing, leading, controlling. And these fields of planning, organizing, leading, and controlling can occur with the financial part. It can also be with, you know, 
our workforce, our employees, time management, materials, supplies, and there's even informational management when we start getting into clinical pharmacy type of services. And so how efficient are you at understanding the financial part of community pharmacy? What do you know about human resources? How well are you in, in managing your own time and teaching others how to manage time? Sometimes it has to be guided by structural you know, description of workflow and also what are the materials and resources needed to be effective managers. And so this management cycle is, is a constant one. We are constantly planning things, organizing things, controlling things, leading things. And I would add one other there, that there's always time we have to step away and analyze what are we managing, what are we reaching an outcome. So every day a manager is going just like a community pharmacy workflow. There are There is data being collected, there is processes needed to be done to receive an output. What challenges and areas of management occur in today's community pharmacy industry? Those are, you know, the education level of people that you work with. How well do they understand the outcome goal that we're trying to achieve? How well do we communicate that to our workflow? Peter Drucker, a famous um, business writer, especially in the 70s and 80s, wrote this. Knowledge workers in today's information age need to ask, what should they be doing in light of their own values in accordance with the objectives and values of an organization? And so what is your organization? What is your pharmacy business main objective? That it could be multiple based upon the services you offer, but one of the things a manager needs to do is convey to their people what we're trying to achieve. So other modern functions of management is we have to learn to energize those who we oversee. We have to learn to delegate and empower those who will help us reach that objective. We need to be there to support, whether it's just helping, you know, support from, you know, mentoring or providing resources. And we need to figure out what is the best way to communicate the plan that we want to achieve. So there's multiple different skills in management. There's accounting skills, there's financing skills, there's the understanding of the economics, the human resources, the marketing, the operation management, and the value creation for your business. And we will be going through multiple of these this semester and highlighting them in more detail. The other thing in, in, in the skills of management is our workforce can be, can be very diverse and we need to be able to work with that. So that's kind of an overview of what you need to have to be an effective manager. But at the same time, in our healthcare world, not only are we managing the output of a product in community pharmacy, but we're also evolving into a way that we're also looking to sell services. And when we're selling services, we have to learn how to manage value. So the next chapter that I'm going to refer from is chapter three in the pharmacy management book. And chapter three is looking at how do we create and manage value. So I open up with this case scenario, James. James is looking um, to, um, is recently graduated from a doctor of pharmacy degree. He has a GPA of 3.9, he, he was a leader in Rokai and Phyland of Signa, and James performed well on his advanced rotations. He's applying for a clinical pharmacy position, and in this situation, he's applying it for a hospital. And when we are looking at use it, looking at human resources, we may be thinking to ourselves when we hire an employee, what do you have to offer to me that other applicants do not? All right what is this future employee going to do for your organization that is going to make you want to pay that person over six figures? So one of the things, not only we're going to be talking about human resources later on the semester, 
but our human resources of when we're hiring people, we need to hire people that have the right skills to be able to do that. Because one of the ways pharmacy is going to succeed in the future now and in the future is we have to be part of this value-driven healthcare system. Value-driven healthcare is a lot different than our traditional we fill a product, we get paid for the product. We are also a fee-for-service business which is slowly evolving into a value-based business. And so that is one thing too this semester we can explore all the different opportunities community pharmacy has and the challenges of managing those opportunities. As a pharmacist, how does my knowledge help bring value that will be impactful to patients, co-workers, and organizations, the profession, the society at large? So how can we manage our business to be able to impact value-based healthcare? There is what's called the relative value theorem. And this definition is the following. Value is a function of desire to obtain high quality goods and services that meet our needs and wants, as well as what we need to sacrifice to obtain them. The relative value theorem is this, is you have a service, like an MTM service. There is a price for it. What does the person perceive the value of that? And that person could be a patient, it could be a payer, it could be a healthcare partner. And how does this option compare to other uses of my dollars and times? So whenever we're selling a value-based service, we have to think about that. And, and that is a key structure in providing value. When we're trying to manage a business that wants to offer service, we have to look at the difference between goods and services. Customer loyalty and profitability are improved by service quality as perceived by the customer. So what does your business do? How does your business solve problems and make that customer feel, feel good? This is actually from an article from Randy McDowell, who actually is an independent community pharmacy owner in the state of Iowa. Randy actually was a formal faculty um, actually at Iowa also. And he de defines service quality from a patient's point of view. That they're looking for businesses that can provide, you know, you know, tangible things that can help them. They're reliable and trustworthy. They show empathy. They, you know, provide me, you know, responsive service. How can you, as a owner or pharmacy manager, relay that to them what businesses that and this is an important point that i believe community pharmacy we've done a good job of being a very respected profession even without maybe offering these new types of services so how can we take advantage of that already respected you know profession how can we get our staff how can we empower people within our organiz organizations to be able to deliver good services just like we delivered good goods and once again I bring up that services is a lot different because it's more patient focused than product focused and when we're selling services it's also providing value people are already looking for the cheapest drug as possible but they may be not willing to pay a little bit more for that if they know they're getting good service. They may be willing to pay for things such as MTM, adherence program, diabetes education, immunizations, if they're providing value. So pharmacists must pr prove that they deserve a role by demonstrating bringing value. One of the places that pharmacy has started to evolve in doing this is is owning the medication adherence business. You see many pharmacies doing med synchronization, adherence packaging to help with that. So we need to look at how can we develop, organize, strategize services that supply to providers, suppliers, payers, you know, and also still that we're following the regulations of pharmacy both at the federal, state, and local level. Besides managing the finances, managing the objectives of taking care of a patient or a payer in developing new services in pharmacy, we also have to look at the value of the outcome they bring. So obviously whatever service you're 
adding to a pharmacy, we need to look at how we're going to evaluate the rate of return of that service and how does that service help. We also need to look at the clinical markers of that service, the humanistic markers of it also. We need to look at the economic outcomes of that service and there's various formulas and when one of the things you're going to do this semester is you're going to create a service driven project that you're going to do strategic planning and operational planning and we'll be looking at the outcomes of how you would manage and evaluate that financially, clinically, and humanistically and we'll go into more detail of that but managing value is of going to be the new thing people that either own pharmacies or work in phar community pharmacies, outpatient pharmacies, because that is where I believe pharmacy is going to survive, is the being able to deliver services versus products. We're already seeing pharmacy needing to do this in response to you know the current landscape. When the star ratings came out focusing on adherence and safety, these were mainly you know designed for the health plans, for the you know, the pharmacy Medicare D plans. What have they done? They've affected pharmacy by imposing DIR fees, which affect the reimbursement of our of the prescriptions we fill. And so how have pharmacies responded by this? By developing synchronization programs, adherence programs to do that. Nobody argues that, you know, you know, if somebody is more adherent to their meds they're, le they're more likely going to not need to be hospitalized or ER visits. An example of, you know, you know, a pharmacy providing value is if they identify a patient who may be on a medication, it's risk for falls, and we take them off that medication, then that patient, all right, um, is going to not have to be hospitalized or use an ER. So there's opportunities, and we can discuss more, especially when we have the Zoom meetings, about where those opportunities exist here in Pennsylvania and nationally. Another example of why you know adherence is important and why people are looking for pharmacy to help this, look at you know the cost of an Advair inhaler compared to the cost of a hospitalization. If the if you know there was a service where the pharmacy helped with adherence of asthma and maybe a payer was willing to pay them, definitely it would far outweigh the cost of just one hospitalization by having that patient adherent. So I will post this under the assignments, but what I'd like you to do for this week, for this part of the lecture is to read through chapters two and three, but I'm going to ask you to do a reflective paper. And I want you to think of, you know, what do you think your management strengths are? Where do you see in the areas of management that you need professional improvement? And what type of professional service could you develop for your organization? In addition, describe how would we create value to all types of stakeholders, patients, providers, payers. Once again, I will post this under the assignment. Thank you, and we'll, I hope you enjoyed this first lecture and be talking to you soon.